Today, we will immerse ourselves in the fascinating world of creating repeatable, coherent characters based only on a handful of photos, and even only on one. It will be training your own LoRa models. What is the LoRa model and how to use them, I explained in the previous course. The link is in the description. Today's knowledge will be useful to those who plan to create a book for children or another work where the same character wanders through various graphics. Diffusion in the context of stable diffusion refers to a process in which the AI model gradually transforms random noise into a coherent image. This process takes place in several stages, where each next step cleans and details the image, getting closer to the desired result. Therefore, in this technique, the AI will not recreate the same character twice, but by teaching our data through LoRa, we can help define what is to be generated. Step 1. In this course, I will be my own experienced cat. We will train the characters on the SDXL model, which requires a resolution of 1024 x 1024. First, we need the graphics of our character in this resolution. If there is a background on the picture, we will use some external free tool to remove it, e.g. Adobe Background Remover. Then, in Photoshop or GIMP, we will change the background to white. This is important because the characteristic elements of the background can also be trained and we only care about the character and her clothes. Step 2. Now we go to RunPod and run our pod. The basics of running RunPod and why it is worth using it I discussed in the first course. I strongly encourage you to visit there. We run the pod on the Community Cloud as standard, and the RTX 3090 card with 24GB VRAM will be as it was found. We open our Jupyter Notebook, which we find on the port 88A8, and in the workspace we create three folders. In the first folder, we put our loaded graphics. Just drag. But remember to pay attention to the file names. They should be called a prompt that will call them, and each one should have a number in the space. Remember about a unique prompt that does not mean anything. Because if we call it a cat, the result can mix with the cat prompt built into the model and create a mix of cats instead of our specific character. The second folder is our workshop in which the Koya SS program, in which we train LoRa, will create its own pod folders. There will also be our finished model. The third folder is the place for the so-called regularization images. There will be graphics similar to the object we are training. For AI, they define the class, the type of what we train, which affects the quality of our LoRa. In the case of a cartoon character, usually about 30 such graphics are enough. For real characters, even a hundred if we have 10 photos of such a person. The amount of regularization images is set a bit by feel. We will notice that if we train the law and do not enter our prompt that will call it and it will be our only prompt, it will generate similar images to our regularization images. Step 3. We can generate these graphics using stable diffusion. We open the port 3000, download the model in which our cat has been generated. We do it in the TVTI Browser Plus tab. I remind you about uploading our law to the Jupyter Notebook in the model slash law folder if we used any. Using the PNG Info tab, we can open our prompts and move them to the text image. Then we generate about 30 of them. From the Stable Diffusion folder, we move them to our Regularization Images folder. We launch Koya SS by clicking on port 3010.
Then, we navigate to the Jupyter Notebook, port 8888. Start by navigating from the Base Workspace folder, then go to the Logs directory. On the right side of the screen, click on Terminal. In the terminal, enter the command tail-fcoya underscore ss dot log. This way, we will have access to the Koya SS terminal and see what's happening. Step 4. A completely new web UI opens in front of us, but without fear, we will handle it. We start by preparing our dataset. We go to the Utilities tab and then to WD14 Captioning. This tool will describe our photos. Thanks to this, AI will know better what object is subject to training and what prompts it is associated with. Step 5. OK, now we will describe our database. We go to the Law tab and then to Dataset Preparation. We copy and paste the paths of our folders, starting from where we store the photos. In the Jupyter Notebook, we right-click Copy Path, and then in Koya SS, we paste it in Source Images. Important note! Using the cloud on RunPod, we have to add a slash before the path everywhere. Otherwise, our files will be like bushes, invisible and unobtainable. We do the same with regularization images. We also indicate the worker folder. Finally, we have to enter the prompt, the so-called trigger, that triggers our law. The same unique which we called files. In order for AI to define what we are training, we also enter a class. In my case, it's a cat. In repeat, we enter the number of times the AI will look into our database to train it. Step 6. In Jupyter Notebook, the structure of the worker folders was created and the same automatically moved to the Folders tab. The law can be trained on any model, but in this case we decide on the model on which our famous cat was created. However, there is no rule without exceptions. I discovered that often when training real people, I achieved better results using the basic SDXL model and only later moving to a more realistic one. So we mark the SDXL model in the Folders tab. We already have everything automatically transferred from dataset preparation. Now there is only one change waiting for us. We have to adjust the name of the model so that it corresponds to our prompt. This way we will be sure and easily remember what prompt causes it without having to look at the metadata. For SDXL, I advise against using presets because they can mix something up or not work well. We enter everything manually and at the end of the setting we can save it to the JSON file. I will also put such a file on the Patron for AI knowledge fans. So let's go. LoRa type standard. Train batch size. In the case of specific people, it is best to set the value to 1, because then our law will be more elastic. Which is often desired because it will be easier to dress it or present it in other styles. Objects can be trained on a slightly larger batch size, for example, two or three, to get more repeatability. And now, the most important thing, Epoch. We come back at the end, mixed and safe precision, changed to BF16. LR Scheduler. Constant. Optimizer. Artifactor. And in the optimizer extra argument, we paste this command, which you will also find in the description of this video. The optimal learning rate for the character is from 4.1 to 0.05, for objects even up to 0.009. 
I encourage you to experiment because it is a parameter responsible for how much the object or character we are training will be reproduced. However, be careful. The combination of learning rate, epoch and repeats, which we defined earlier, will determine the number of steps how much AI will train the object. If we overdo it, our graphics will be identical to our trained dataset. We are talking about retraining then. We are looking for a golden mean so that our character is repeatable but flexible, which can appear in various poses and expressions. LR warm up set to zero. Resolution, of course, to 1024. Text encoder learning rate and unit learning rate set the same as the main learning rate. Minimum bucket resolution is responsible for how large the file we have trained will be. For 256, our LoRa will take a lot. This may affect the amount of details, but it can also turn out to be an overgrowth of the form over the content, and you have to remember that it will push VRAM memory. For our cartoon cat, we reduced it a bit to 192 because we don't need as many files and so many details. Network rank is a parameter that affects the training process of the LoRa. The optimal value will be 108. However, if we have any errors with the out of memory statement, we can reduce it to 96 or 92. We do not touch the rest of the things. In the Advanced tab, we turn on Gradient Checkpointing, which will speed up the training process. And we go back to our epochs. The epoch is responsible for how many times the entire training process is to be looped. So the more we set, the stronger the object will train us. We can set the save LoRa on the so-called on the way, so we will be able to check the LoRa for fewer steps if our target turned out to be overworked. We have a data set of only two photos, so we set these epochs to 10 and save the model to every two. Now let's check how many steps we will train. We click Print Training Command and go to Jupyter Notebook. We look at the terminal. We are interested in max train steps. We see that there were two graphs in the training folder. Repeats we set to 30, so 2 times is 60. Regularization factor is 2, so multiply by 2. And epoch is 10. So this is our action. For a line code, these parameters should be fine. If we train a real character, we aim even between 2,000 and 3,000 steps, manipulating the epoch parameter. Step 7. And everything is ready. Now we just have to start training and go back to the terminal, observing what is happening there. If out-of-memory error pops up, we lower network rank to dimension. We observe what is happening for a moment. If the training reaches the point where it starts to progress further, it means that everything is fine. So we can go for a coffee. If we want to save all the parameters that we would like to recreate in the future, we click on the top in the configuration file. We give a path, file name, we write the extension JSON and click Save. We have the file in the workspace and we can download it. When we finish the work, it's time to test our model. So we go to our workspace folder and there, in the model folder, we will find our trained LoRa. Without unnecessary fuss, we transfer it to the LoRa folder in Stable Diffusion. Then we open our Stable Diffusion interface, refresh the LoRa tab. It is also good to load the model from scratch. 
because sometimes it may happen that it does not notice that there is a new Laura in the city. We add a prompt that calls it. In our case, it is a droid cat with a double T. And here it is. Our character plays beautifully, even with the power of Laura of 0 0.8. We test further by changing the prompts, for example, so that our character eats sushi. We also try a few other variants. We increase the power to 0 0.9 so that our character repeats the details even more accurately. And that's it. We have it. Here I admit that our example of sushi may not be the best, because sushi is not a typical dish for a cat, but our Laura works. Time for a well-deserved rest. Thank you for sticking to the end. Subscribe to the channel, because this is just the beginning of useful AI courses. You will help by giving a thumbs up for algorithms. Remember that working with AI is not only technology, but also an endless source of creativity. Good luck. Hey!